I bought my van and brought it home in August. Didn't get it outfitted until November. And then I didn't get on the road until January. But once I did get rolling, I put 15,000 miles on the van in just a few months. And I've loved every minute of it. Okay, obviously not every single minute, because that's why I'm back with another Van Tweaks video to try to make the van even more livable, even more comfortable. I have been struggling since the very beginning to actually get a good lighting system underneath my bed in my little bike garage here. These little $5 cheapos from Walmart are actually pretty good, but they're just not the right tool for the job. I need something that will detect that I'm there when I have my hands full in the dark. I've tried at least three different underbed lights that had motion detecting that were junk and that just did not work for what I need to do. Let's stop messing around and just spend some real money. I spent 50 bucks on these lights. I got two of them. They're about 25 bucks each on Amazon. Great reviews, LED, so you know they're bright, USB rechargeable, and the best part is they're magnetic. So they came with some really high quality double-sided tape and this metal bar here. So I just double-sided taped the metal bar to where I wanted the lights and then bam, you snap on the lights, magnetize, and they are good to go. The motion detection seems pretty dang good so far. Turns a dark van into a bright, bright van when you're looking around for all your stuff. The cool thing about these being magnetic is you could just pop one off and use it as a flashlight all around the van if you needed a really bright light. It also makes it really easy to recharge because you can go bring it over to your charge station instead of having some super long USB cable. The only legit problem with the van that I still worry about and think about is climate control. It's just so subpar. If it's hot outside, it's even hotter inside. If it's cold outside, it's slightly less cold inside. I think the real solution to climate control is closed cell foam and I just don't have the time or patience to just tear everything out of the van and almost start from scratch and then put everything back in. So I bought another roll of merino wool and there were actually a lot of air cavities that were untouched in the van. So I started stuffing this stuff up and down and left and right anywhere I could find it and I used the whole roll and I feel pretty good about it but it's it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, you can throw an air conditioner at it, you can throw a heater at it, but at the end of the day, it's just not an airtight system. It's not a great system. It's still a metal box. I think I've spent the better part of six weeks now messing with the wiring on my van. At least I've been learning stuff, but this goes so slow and you have nothing to show for it. Even this whole video, it's like, ugh, what am I even going to say? Yeah, I rewired everything. I made it look pretty. I put it in some nice spots where I just spent so much time tinkering and pulling out and Oh, it's such menial labor, but I am very, very happy with how all this came out. It's very sleek, and I've got the heat shrink tubing, and I learned a lot about DC voltage systems and all that stuff, too. So I'm happy that I got it all dialed in pretty good, but man, uh, so much labor-intensive, crouched under the bed, just suffering. <laughs> but hey, I'm happy with it now. Now that I'm carrying two bikes in the van a lot, I realize that somehow I totally blew up this measurement here of getting the handlebars away from my big old box. I can't move the box over to the right any because I'm using that vacant area for my charging station, so I'm going to have to pick up and drill new holes in the Rocky Mounts and actually get this thing moved over about 2.5 inches. Not, not too bad. I'm really happy with how this turned out because I actually took my time and I took all the hardware off of this piece of wood instead of like trying to rush through it. So I actually did it the right way. I drilled two new holes, then I hit those holes with countersink bits so my bolts would actually lay flush against the ground. I got everything mounted back up inside the van and it is looking so good. This was totally worth it. Just moving that thing over a couple inches, plenty of room still, the bikes are not gonna hit each other, and boom, you got the clearance against the box, no funkiness, you can get the bikes in and out, super smooth. I've got an air compressor on my van, but the fitting at the back of my van has always been kind of a piece of crap. I've been complaining about it from the very start, and a bunch of you guys suggested I check out one of these pretty expensive Prevost, Prevost uh, air fittings. They're supposed to be the best in the business, and uh, yeah, for 25 bucks, I sure hope so. 
And once again, you guys were right. I should have had this the whole time. This fitting feels so nice when you put it in. It's really easy. When you take it out, you just hit the button and that releases all the air. Normally when you pull off one of these things, it blows up in your face and it's always kind of a weird, scary thing. This is so much better. This is something I should have had in my van from the start. It's a little battery powered jump starter. It's an easy little thing to keep in the van, USB powered, it's about a hundred bucks, but what are you willing to pay to get your van started up in the morning when you're out in the middle of nowhere and something went wrong? I know this sounds kind of dumb, but make sure you know where the battery is inside your car they don't make them like 65 Mustangs anymore. My van, my battery is located under my feet in the driver's seat. The Wayfarer van's kit came with a hand pump for the sink, which is just so bad when you have really dirty hands and you need them to be washed. So I switched to an electric pump with a switch on the faucet, and now every time I wash my hands, I make an ungodly mess. I just get water everywhere. So I ended up buying a foot switch on eBay and it kind of sort of solves the problem. It is still a big rigmarole when you want to use the sink. You got to take the top off. You got to flip this up. You got to actually turn the switch on for the faucet. You got to pull the foot pedal out. You got to put the foot pedal down. You got to step on the foot pedal and then the water eventually starts coming out. So maybe I'll just switch to a foot pump, which is probably the best solution for this. I was just afraid of all the wiring or not the wiring of the foot pump, but you know, the hydraulic of the foot pump and how that would work so you live and you learn it was cheap on ebay I, I had to give it a try i did end up adding a little bit of velcro to the foot pedal just to keep it out of the way and so it's not flopping around when i'm driving I've been using these big heavy duty LED string lights that Walmart had. I, I don't know why I bought like the waterproof version, the outdoor ready one, maybe just because they had it and I was like, oh yeah, this is what I'm looking for. But now I realize that no, I need a very sleeker, smaller version because I want to run string lights around the whole van. And this thing is just way too bulky to do anything with. There's a million of these damn string lights on Amazon, so I, I just did my best. Looked like good reviews. I think I bought one that was a little more expensive. I don't know why that makes me feel better, but maybe it won't burn down the van. The double-sided tape on these lights was excellent as well. It made it really easy to hide the lights inside this ceiling panel thing and just ring the entire top of the van with subtle lighting. I don't need big flashy lighting. I already have that. This is just for chill night light. So if you get up when you have to go to the bathroom, you don't trip over yourself and you don't blind yourself. I'm also using this downtime to just pull everything out of the van, look at it, assess it. Did I just buy this and never use it and it's taking up space now? Oh, no way. I definitely need every little bit of this stuff. And there is just one last thing. I think it's time to finally put in my Nugabago sign 3D printed by Steve from Spokesman MTB. Someday when all of this clears, the Nugabago will be back on the road and it will take down state after state after state. I can't wait. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.